do you follow your dreams or do you watch Netflix? Do you work for the business that you want to create or do you scroll on Instagram? Today, we're going to be talking about the life that you have and the life that you live. And what I want to talk about today, first, I have a question for you. Have you been living your life as if you happened to get another shot? Have you been living your life as if maybe, you know, if you think to baseball, like you're not on, you're not at the batter's box yet. You're kind of on deck and maybe, you know, I'll get another chance. I'll get another chance. I'll get another chance. Do you live your life as if you just happen to get another chance? Or do you live your life as if this is the only thing that I know is that I have it and I'm going to take full advantage of it? Do you follow your dreams or do you watch Netflix? Do you work for the business that you want to create or do you scroll on Instagram? Do you live your life as if this is the only one that you have or do you live your life as just maybe, yeah, I'll get another chance someday. Knowing, we all know, that you don't get another chance. This is the one that you have. You know, there's so many people live as if tomorrow is just guaranteed. One of the things I've been pulling in as a practice to myself, I did it this morning, is I take about two minutes while I'm still laying in bed and I look up at the ceiling and I look there and I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I finally, I get another day, I get another day. And for, I mean, 34 years of my life, I never did this. And I'm like, I can't believe I get another day. How amazing is it? Because there's so many times that I've woken up in my life and I'm like, oh, I have so much stuff to do today. I've got so much I got to do. I've got to go. I don't even, I want to go meditate, but I might not even have time to meditate. Like I've, I got to go chug some coffee because I got a call I got to hop on. Then I got to work out. I got to do this, this, this. Versus just sitting there for a second being like, oh my God, I woke up today. How freaking amazing is that? Do you live your life as if you happen to get another one? Or do you live your life as if, you know, this is it. And this is all that you got. Because so many people live as if tomorrow is just guaranteed. And, you know, if you've heard me say the statistics before, 150,000 people did not wake up today that woke up yesterday. 150,000 people died yesterday. You didn't. You're listening to this. Are you living today as if today is the very last day of your life? I remember I was listening to a, um, a great talk between um, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Larry King. I think Larry King just died, if I'm not mistaken. But um, if he didn't, holy crap, that guy's still alive. <laughs> but I don't know if he's alive or not. I should probably Google it. But uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he was being interviewed by Larry King. It was a few years ago. And Larry King said, they were talking about life and life after death and other planets and aliens and all kinds of stuff. Larry King said, if you could live forever, would you? And Neil deGrasse Tyson said, no. And then he asked Larry King if he would, and he said, absolutely. And Neil deGrasse Tyson said, the reason why I wouldn't want to live forever is because if I live forever, then it gives me no urgency to do anything. Like death, the, um, the death that we're going to have brings immediate uh, urgency to my life. And I think most people don't live like that. They don't live and they don't think about how their death is coming to them. Like there, it's every breath we get closer. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but I'm trying to be honest. Like when you think to yourself, it's going to happen one day. It makes me personally be like, I need to start working harder to do what it is I want to do, make the impact in the world to, to change it in some sort of way, to change myself, to make the people around me better. You might not wake up tomorrow. And if you didn't wake up tomorrow and you're off in wherever people go after they die, will you look and be like, damn, there's so much more that I wanted to do that I could have done, but I just acted like I didn't get in those. I act like I was just gonna be here forever. Have you been living your life as if you're just going to be here forever? And you're just, oh, I'm just that immortal person that stays here forever. I can do whatever the hell I want. You know, I'm gonna waste it on Netflix. I'm gonna waste it on Instagram scrolling. I'm gonna waste it on doing things, you know, worrying about things that don't matter when 85% of the time, none of those things actually happen in the first place. If you knew that today was your last day, what would you have missed out on in your life? If you knew today was the very last day of your life, what would you have missed out on of the past 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of your life? What would you know that you missed out on because you were acting like you might get another shot? You were not putting urgency to taking action in your life. What chances didn't you take? What things didn't you do on your bucket list that you wanted to do, but you were telling yourself, I'll get to it someday down the road. I'll try it later on. I'll figure it out sometime. It's like the story of a guy who he, uh, he was going to retire and he had saved all of this money 
for him and his wife to go and travel because their dream was to travel. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to get to retirement age. And then what I'm going to do is then we're going to be able to go travel. And so he works, 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 gets to this retirement age. And, and, and his, his wife's like, all right, well, now you can retire. We can go out and do the traveling we planned for. He's like, let me get just one more year. I'll get one more year. So I feel that I'm fully responsible, like financially good to go, responsible. We're locked in for life. Let me get one more year. And then I swear to you, 365 days from today, we're going to go traveling and I'm going to be done. And she's like, okay, you can do that. And in those 365 days, she died. And he didn't get to travel with his wife the way they want to. And now he's stuck there by himself, having all these dreams and all these places he wants to go to with his wife. And now he's just got his money, but he doesn't have his wife and he doesn't have anyone to travel with. So why are you living your life like that? As if you're just guaranteed tomorrow, as if you're just guaranteed next year. What chances didn't you take? What places, if you died today, what places did you not travel to that you've been wanting to travel to, but you've just been pushing it off because there's a couple other things that are a little bit more important at this part, at this point in your life. What were you not able to give your loved ones? What were you not able to give your children if you died today and you look back in the rest of your life? What were you not able to give your spouse with your family? What were you not able to give them that you wanted to give them, but you were telling yourself it just wasn't the time yet. And I want to be honest with you. And I want you to think about these things because I want to kind of shake you up sometimes. Like I want to shake you up and make you start thinking about your life. It's like when someone that you know dies and you go to their funeral, you start thinking about your life a whole lot more, don't you? You start thinking about, man, I never thought they were going to die. They missed out on so many things. How many things have I missed out? What if I died? And sometimes people make changes after someone's funeral. Sometimes they feel like they're going to change. And then a couple weeks down the road, life just kind of goes back to normal and they forget all about it. But if I were to ask you on a scale of one to 10, one being like absolutely terrible, 10 being like the best possible life that anyone has ever lived in the history of mankind, what would you rate your life as of right now and how much you've gotten out of your life up until this moment? Answer the question. What is it? On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate your life as far as what you've done, how much you've gotten out of it, how much, how many dreams you've followed, how many places you've traveled, how many bucket list items you've knocked off? What would you rate it on a scale of one to 10? Think about that for a second. Have you taken all of the risks? Have you done all of the things? Have you traveled all the places? Or have you lived your life in fear? Have you worried too much? Have you wasted too much time doing things that didn't matter? Have you worried too much about what others would think about you? And so you've held yourself back because of it. You haven't followed your dreams. Which one is it? And now looking forward, which one would you like it to be? You know, if you rate yourself as a six in your life right now, what's the difference between a six and an eight? And what would add an extra two points to that number over the next year to get you to an eight? What shifts and changes and moves would you have to do in your life in order to get you to go from, I think I'm a six out of a 10 in my life to an eight out of 10 in my life. One of the things that I love, and I've heard this a couple of times in a couple of different ways from a couple of different people is, is if you imagine God has a checklist for you, right? And he's just checking off all the things. And it's like, Rob Dial, he's going to do this. 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 And it's all of the things that you could possibly do and all the things you could possibly be. And you know, some of them are checking off and some of them aren't everything that you could do, everything you could see, everything that you could achieve, all of the lives that you could impact, all the chances that you could take the full on hell. Yes. Accomplish everything. Rob dial life is what it'd be for me and whatever it would be for you. My goal is to get to the end of my life and to have God have this checklist and go, damn, you literally checked off all of them in some of them that I didn't even have on here. Like you did even better than I thought you were going to do. That's what my goal is to do. Another example of the way I've heard it explained is, is imagine that your perfect self, your most enlightened, badass, accomplished everything, did everything, impacted the lives, made the money, had the success, had the love, had the joy, built the best family, built the best businesses, changed the world as much as possible. Most enlightened version of yourself is waiting for you in heaven and you die my goal is to get to the end, to see that version of me and we're twins. Not to see that version of me be like, oh, sh I could have done that. I could have done that thing. Oh my God, I didn't, I could have done that. I don't want to get to the end of my life and feel like that's the way I want to feel. I want to get to the end of my life and see the most enlightened, the best, did as much as they possibly could, changed the world as much as they possibly could, loved as much as they possibly could, built the family they possibly could. And I look at myself and I'm like, I'm looking in a mirror. 
What would that look like? Think of those two things. What would the checklist look like that God would have? And what would your twin look like that if you got to the end of your life, that you became, you were the twins with that person, which is your best, highest, most enlightened self. What would that look like for you? You know, what I would recommend is take a pen and paper and literally just spend the next 15 minutes. Put me on pause, journal through this. If you pause me, I'll be here forever waiting for you. I'll literally be here forever until you decide to push play again. Pause me and write down all of the things that you want to do, that you should do, that you know you have the opportunity to do, but you just haven't been doing and you want to do. So think about that for a second. You have to think about this and think, okay, if I rate myself at a level six out of 10 right now, what would I need to do over the next 365 days to bring that number up to that eight that we're speaking about earlier? What would I need to do? Okay, you know what I need to do? This job that I have, it's, it's soul sucking. It's not fulfilling in any sort of way. And I know I've been wanting to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to start making a plan and start making movement into doing whatever that thing is. It might take a year to transition out of my job so I can pay my bills. It might take two years, but at least I'm starting to make movement into the direction of what it feels like I'm actually truly supposed to do. And if you don't know what it is you're supposed to do, you don't know what your true purpose and path in life is, I always say this to, to kind of give you the idea. It's okay right now not to know what your purpose is, but it's not okay to not wake up every single day and constantly be in the pursuit of trying to find what that purpose is. So if you don't know what your purpose is right now, no big deal. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you're one of the people who doesn't know what your purpose is, then it is a crime for you to wake up every single day and not be in constant freaking pursuit to find out why the f you're alive. If you just wake up and do the same thing that you did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that, it's an absolute crime. If you don't know what your purpose is, that's okay. But it is an absolute crime if you wake up every single day and you're not in constant pursuit to find what that thing is. If we're planning out 365 days from today, make a checklist of all of the things that you need to do in order to move your life from a six out of 10 to an eight out of 10. What do you want your body to look like? You know, what, if your body's a six out of 10, what would an eight out of 10 look like? What do you need to do to get there? What does your family look like at an eight out of 10? What does your relationship with your children look like at an eight out of 10? What does your relationship with your spouse look like at an eight out of 10? What is the relationship with your parents, with your brother, sister, cousins, best friends? What does that look like to become an eight out of 10? What does your bank account look like to go from a six to an eight out of 10? What does your mindset look like to go from a six to an eight out of 10? And what are all of the things that you need to do and you need to accomplish and you need to be laser-like focused on over the next 365 days to bring yourself from a six to a 10? Because here's the thing that we all know. If we put work in, we know we'll change. Think of where you could be 365 days from today if you just started today. What do you need to do to get there? How much work do you need to put in? What things do you need to check off? Don't worry about the rest of your life because you're gonna die one day. It's freaking happening. So am I, it's happening, right? Don't worry about the rest of your life. Just worry, don't worry about the, the next 365 days. Plan for the next 365 days, but just worry on today. Think about today. If I wanna to get to an eight out of 10 in my body, what do I need to do today to get myself from a six to a 10 or six to an eight in the next year? What do I need to do today? What's the first step that I need to take to get myself from a six to an eight, from a six to an eight, to move up a couple different steps? What does that look like? What does my mindset look like? What does my body look like? What does my bank account look like? What does my business look like? What does my family look like? What does my every single relationship in my life look like? What does every single thing look like if Rob from six out of eight decided to show up as Rob, or six out of 10, decided to show up as Rob of eight out of 10, what is the difference in the delta between the six and the eight? What is the difference in my actions? What is the difference in my focus? What is the difference in every single thing, every single thing that I do, think, be? What does that look like? And how do I need to make sure that I focus on that today? I don't care about the rest of your life. I don't care about the next 365 days. I care about today and what you do today to shift yourself over the next year, to shift yourself over the next five years, over the next 10 years, hopefully over the next 50 years. But the only thing that matters is just today. Nothing else matters because we don't even know if we're gonna to get tomorrow. But what really matters is today. How can I make sure that I get every single bit of everything out of today? And that's all I gotta focus on. And when I wake up tomorrow, how can I get every single bit of happiness, love, joy, peace, success, everything out of tomorrow? 
and that's all that matters. And if you do this every single day, every single day, it'll stack and stack and stack and stack and stack on top of itself. And then you do wake up 365 days from today and you're like, holy shit, life is completely different than it was a year ago. But only because the only thing that I focused on was every single day, every single day, because damn it, I woke up. I'm grateful for that I woke up and I'm not going to give a kick in the face to God or the universe because I decided to sit around and waste that. Shit. What about you? What does an eight out of 10 look like? What does a nine out of 10 look like? What does a 10 out of 10 look like? Because you don't get another chance. This is the only one that you got. Stop living your life as if you get another chance. Stop living your life as if you're in the on deck circle because you're in the batter's box. That is how you should be living your life. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. And so many people die with regrets. So many people die not being able to bring their full potential out to the world. So many people die just not fully living. I hope you're not one of those people. If you're listening to this podcast, you're definitely not one of those people.